Silva. I'm Daniel Bazell, Director of Industrial Design here at Everyday Edison's. And today I'm going to take you through a couple of the processes and kind of the components and things we use in the industrial design um, deliverable phases. Um, you can see here I've got obviously sketches that clients have improved from ideation phase. And here we're actually putting some color and marker to the concepts. And we know from market research that this EXO stroller concept was the winner overall in a uh, nationwide panel of testing. So what we've got to do next is actually bring this to the point to where we can further evaluate through engineering and even with the consumer, um, the textures and the forms and the details of design. Um, like you hear quite often with products, uh, design is in the details. So we're going to go into that from a stylistic standpoint. I'm going to share with you, of course, how we do that with some of these advanced software programs compared to just sketching. So here we have what was approved. And you can see the concept with the EXO concept is some, a lot of breathability and mesh and texture. And we've got to actually show that to the customer before they'll sign off. And now the customers are, in this case, the customers at retail and even the buyers for the retail channels. Um, in the process of doing that, I'm also sketching out some other details for the product uh, that are client requested. So you can see how I'm going in between three or four different types of programs um, and using everything I've kind of gotten the quiver as an industrial designer to further develop this product. So here I'm sketching, I'm kind of reviewing, um, and then over on this side of the screen I'm working in Alias to actually further develop this product in three dimension, um, which is going to give us those photorealistic renderings. So you can see here on the screen I've got the stroller obviously. Um, it's pretty much built up. We're at a point where what we're actually doing is really getting to the, the textural details and the lighting of the product. It's similar to um, a video shoot or photography in a way because we're actually going act to actually set up the scene and the lighting details um, so that we can get rendering after rendering um, for color studies and texture studies. So here we have the model and you can see here it's kind of a, a muted gray because they want some renderings in a graphite color. And then we'll go over here and you can see these shaders. Now all these spheres represent materials um, some are metallic, others are, um, for example, fabric, some are transparent or plastic. And all these start out as a default shader. Um, so the default shader here is very bland, and obviously if I assign that shader to anything, it's just going to be a pretty neutral element. And you see that pink, that real bright pink is the default shader. So when you first start out with the program, everything that you're working on is and more or less, it doesn't have its detail assigned to it yet. I mean, the real difference is, is that you're going from conceptual and it being very unfinished and it leaving a lot to the imagination to something that's kind of actually taking the imagination out and becoming reality. Um, you can see here, uh, these are conceptual sketches. Um, one may be confused whether or not that's fabric. Is that a rigid plastic molded canopy? Um, is this metal? Is this plastic? Is that rubber? Uh, and what we want to do and the goals with this next phase is to go from the conceptual realm and really start to take the imagination out of the product so people can truly evaluate for what it is. Uh, obviously at this point people can put their own opinion and kind of assign details to the conceptual idea. When we get to the final design and 3D modeling phase, we're assigning all those details so that people can make a real decision on the product. So while I've actually been working and assigning new details, I've actually had the program rendering re um, color after color and shader after shader so that we can make a decision on what the final product color studies would be. So we have, for example, you know, oranges, um, you know, blacks and grays. We have different icon colors and buttons. All these are going to be evaluated by the customer so they can select the final three colors that they take to market. And sometimes we'll do 50 or 60 colorways um, to kind of pare down all those color details. The whole process from start to finish can take, for example, this stroller is about two weeks of build time because of all the details. And then once you set, it take you about a day to set up your lighting and your shaders. And then the great thing is after that, when you get to where you're doing the color studies, you're knocking out color studies about every 15 to 20 minutes. And you can actually have the computer set up to where you're rendering one right after the other while you're continuing to work. So I'm normally rendering three color studies 
while I'm adjusting and tweaking the next. Um, so you can see how it's really good from a standpoint of a customer is, you know, they'll come to us, and maybe their textile designers will come to us and say they want to try a few things. We can actually create those deliverables for them to test and see on the product. Um, quite often we even have a customer bring in or we'll bring in a material, we'll scan it upstairs, bring it down and actually assign it to the shader so we can render that material on the three-dimensional design. The 3D world is very expensive and that's that not only is it expensive because you've got to afford the software and the computers to run the program, but it also takes quite a long time to actually learn the process. For the independent inventor, uh, software like this is incredibly expensive and a little bit out of budget. Uh, but what we're actually doing in the deliverables that we're creating here, you can mimic in that process. You know, quite often you aren't going to the level with, a, with an invention and an idea where you're doing final design evaluation studies. But you can mimic the process by, of course, creating a sketch and maybe even having the actual fabric samples with that sketch so you can evaluate it. A um, good example is taking a, a concept sketch or even having a student um, conceptualize a step sketch for you, maybe even an intern, um, and then pulling together the palette of what that product's going to be made for so you can have it evaluate. Um, here I'm actually replicating metal and plastic and fabric, um, but you could on a budget, take your conceptual idea and then have those materials to the side and actually point out to them, okay, this red area here we're thinking about doing in a ballistic nylon and have that product sample. Or this grip will be a foam and have a product sample. Um, that's one way to kind of do it on a budget um, when, you, when you're, when you're you know, obviously operating um, without this type of software. So um, that's one way. Um, another is if you have a local industrial design program, um, talk to professors and see if you have a product that's able to maybe go into to the program and let the students kind of explore. Now, you may not get products that are consumer ready or tested. They may be high design or blue sky, but if it helps you develop things a little bit further, there can be some value to that. Um, and of course, the budget for that is, is very low and you're actually helping students further their portfolio. So that's, that's another option as well.